Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where on Wednesdays we discuss Japanese woodblock prints, paintings, history, and culture. Today I'm running a little late, so for those of you joining me live, welcome. Um, I want to welcome all of you who also join us um, on YouTube. Um, and for those of you who are new, um, I do these lives on Facebook and then um, I upload the videos onto YouTube so that you can check it out uh, later. There is an archive of over 100 videos um, for Woodblock Wednesday covering all sort of topics of Japanese prints and paintings. So I encourage you to check out those videos. Uh, they're all uh, sort of listed on our website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. And so um, what I want to discuss with you today are a couple of really great prints from my latest exhibition of new acquisitions for the summer. So if you haven't visited our website in the last couple of days, I encourage you to do that, collectingjapaneseprints.com. Um, we have about a 40 plus new prints on a variety of different subjects. Most of them though, treat um, sort of uh, bird and flower designs. Um, a few of them are on cats and other animals. And of course there's some landscapes and some portraits, prints by Shinhanga artists, Osakuhanga artists. So there's a little bit of everything, but I thought it would be fun today to show two really wonderful prints by Tomo Inagaki. And he was a Sosaku Hanga artist who specialized in prints of cats. Um, he, was a, he was a big cat fan and he had his own pet cat at home. And it was that cat that inspired him to produce prints of that subject. So without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look. So I'm gonna pan out. Um, these two prints are quite large and let me get my notes so that I don't get any dates wrong. Uh, and so we'll start off with this uh, l large uh, design. Um, this print is called Un's Cat's Green. So he had a friend um, and that friend's name was A-U-N, Un. And this is uh, Un's pair of cats. Um, there's two versions of this print and this is one done in sort of a bright, Green. It's a really striking design that brings out the the cats. And the background is kind of a, a lime green with a darker green um, done in this really interesting sort of mid-century modern um, feeling. And the cats themselves are, I mean, they're adorable. Uh, you know, Inagaki's prints can be very cute. And they, I, I, would, I would say this is one of those uh, designs. Um, the cat on the left, has this sort of look uh, where he's sort of meowing. Um, and the cat on the right is more stoic. He's just kind of looking out. Um, so it's I just look at this print and just kind of laugh. Um, they, they both cats have a very distinct, um, different personality. And for those of you familiar with cats, you could, uh, you definitely know that cats have their own personalities. And, um, yeah, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you could see the the woodblock printed surface. It's uh, the design by Nagaki is very simplified in the sense that the the design is, has a strong sort of graphic uh, quality with uh, very distinctive bold lines, and um, of course there's a simplic simplification. That's a word that I wanted to say. Uh, simplification of the composition to bold um, areas of line and color. And uh, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this, this guy's face. And then, of course, here we have his partner there looking on, meowing. And the, 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 the cat's fur is done really interestingly. Inagaki sort of creates this... The, you could see the, the these little lines, and they're done by carving out the surface of the wood in a very um, ornate fashion. You could see the, the very intricate wood grain in areas, but then you have a very simplified form here, which is just brown with these uh, sort of lines going up. 
And then there's the bottom part is done in a darker brown. So, you know, it's very geometric, um, very, I mean, this really has a strong mid-century modern uh, feeling with, with the bold colors and, and the simplified composition. And in, on this uh, print, I want to showcase the edition. It is 15 out of 50, which is a, a kind of a, on the smaller size of editions of for this artist. He he did prints of editions of 100 to 150. So for 50, that's that's actually a pretty small edition for this design. And you know, being so cute, you know, I'm sure that the, this print. Um, sold quite quickly. And, you know, I want to address one other factor about the Inagaki's prints. Um, and obviously, you know, some of them are very, very cute and charming. And that is something that is really inherent in the Japanese culture. They they really admire and understand this idea of cuteness in a different way than I think Think Westerners do. It's sort of embedded in their culture now, and we have artists like Yoshitomo Unara and Murakami that produce artwork that is very, like, and I say cute in air quotes, because it's actually psychologically deeper than the the, the first look of cuteness. You I mean, you see the cuteness on the surface, and it's a veneer, and there's a lot more to unravel than just a cute design in, in those two artists' case. And in Inagaki, um, I, I'm not going to say that he has the same ideas that Nara or Murakami do, but you, they do have this connection, this Japanese aesthetic of cuteness or kawaii. And so, you know, that is definitely something that's part of the culture that, you know, we can see. You know, when we go to Japan, there's all sorts of mascots that you see. Each store may have a mascot, a city may have a mascot, a neighborhood may have a mascot. It's a thing. And, um, you know, so you could see that Inagaki is drawing from that tradition. I'm going to zoom in so you can see the surface of the, of the printing on this really wonderful print, which happens to be available on, on my website. Now, I want to showcase another design. This is an earlier work. This print is called White Cat, and it was done in 1957. And the edition on this one is 1 out of 10. So it's, it's actually much rarer than this impression. Um, but the way that Inigaki worked, he would do a small edition. And then if it sold well, he would do a second edition. And then a third edition, if, if it sold even really well. And I believe that there's a later edition of this design. But this is really the one of the earliest impressions. And we have, again, a, a cat in a very simplified format. It almost kind of has have a Picasso-esque quality to it. The face has sort of a slight cubist quality. And then these lines in the background do echo that. Um, but, you know, it's interesting to point out you know, what he's done, the carving um, on the surface here. So you could see this, the fur that's sort of um, showcased by the carving and, and it's carved out on blocks of different color. So we have here more of a gray background with a brown carving out the fur. Here we have a solid wood grain pattern of a lighter brown. And so he's showcasing how, how in this, cat he might have been um you know multicolored in in his fur and how inagaki translated all those colors into sort of blocks of color and and he was interested in showing the shadow and the color in different forms by creating different surface printing so this is this printing was done with a a block and he probably scraped it to get this surface um, and of course it's done in a lighter um, color and here we have a darker brown which you could still see the the surface of the block of the wood but it, it's not as roughly um, uh, carved or or abraded on the surface as this uh, this one is much more there's a lot more work on the surface than this one and of course this is just the carving out that's printed over 
over the white of the cat. So I think it's really neat. He certainly thought out about how to incorporate shadow and texture into the composition of the print. And so it's actually quite complicated. And when you look at this design, you know, it starts unfolding before your eyes and you get to see all of those layers of work um, that the artist uh, laid into the, the print. So I'm going, I'm going to move up so you could see the printing. And in the case of both prints, the, the, the colors are really vibrant and bright. And here we have these really beautiful blue eyes that pop against the white of his face. I'm going to zoom out. And again, move over so you could see this other work. Now the surface of this one is really interesting and I want, to, I want to go across it one last time and compare it to the other one so you could see. Um, though both are cat prints, Inagaki's uh, artistry really progressed throughout his um, career and he, he started with more of a Picasso-esque cubist quality in his compositions and and he kept the interest in simplification but he he focused on the face to be a little bit more realistic here it's more abstracted in some ways and here if i could call this realistic of course they look cartoonish but in a, in a more realistic way in a manga-esque way whereas this is not as strongly sort of rooted in, in, in a manga uh, cute fashion. I think Inagaki is one of those artists that um, is fascinating. His early work has nothing to do with cats. It's landscapes and some portraits, uh, but mostly landscapes. And he was really active producing artwork that displayed um, the aftermath of the earthquake of 1923. And I'll discuss that in the in the future. Uh, next year will be the anniversary of that um, catastrophe. And so we'll, we'll discuss the earthquake of 1923 and how artists responded to that tragic uh, event. Um, but for now, it, it suffices to say that Inagaki certainly was rooted in a Sosaku Hanga tradition that was very expressive and emotional, but moved away for that, from that and then sort of concentrated on cats and this sort of highly stylized cubist kind of quality, which then um, moved into this sort of manga cute cat phenomena that everyone associates with Inagaki now. Uh, zoom in one last time. All right, look at those two. <laughs> okay, and then here you go, this guy. Now, before I go, I always like to highlight, uh, we're going to back up a little bit. These are very large size prints, and you could see um, with me showing the table how much uh, the space they take. Um, they're quite large, and Inagaki cat prints are usually larger in scale. His earlier landscapes were quite smaller, so he really found his voice when doing these uh, cat prints, and he went with it. He ran with the subject and produced some very large compositions. So before I go, I want to point out a really valuable uh, resource for Inagaki. This book is the closest we have to a catalog raisonné. It's a hardcover book produced in 1980, and this was done after he died. Um, and so he died in 1980. And so this book commemorates the artist with, you know, hundreds of designs. Uh, a lot of the early period is illustrated in this book, but a lot of his cat prints are too. And it's illustrated in black and white as well as color. And there are some other books that showcase a few Inagaki designs, 
But this is the book to have if you're a fan of Inagaki, and it happens to be in my bookstore as well. So if you're interested in looking through the book, I have a video of the book and its contents. Um, so if you go to my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com, click the bookstore logo or the icon, and then you'll you'll scroll down, look for Tomo Inagaki, click on that, and you'll have access to the video that shows the contents of the book. So again, these are two really striking designs by the Sosaku Hanga artist Tomo Inagaki. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me in our latest installment of Woodblock Wednesday. Uh, it was just, it was really fun to show these two prints. Uh, I think they're like really charming. And, and um, one of the highlights of our exhibition. So if you're interested, please have a look. Again, collectingjapaneseprints.com. And if you have any questions about any of the prints that are on my website or about Tomo Nagaki, feel free to reach out. Either drop a, mess, a, a quick question below, I'll be happy to address it, or you can email me. And of course, if you have not signed up for our emails, go to the website and sign up so you'll be contacted every time we have a special event, an offering, or an exhibition such as this one that just went up. So I want to thank all of you for joining me in this installment of Woodblock Wednesday, and I look forward to seeing all of you next week. Till then, bye-bye.